I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial giving us the millennial perspective, Mr. Dave Barreto. How you doing, big day? Doing good. You know, I got to say, I like these uh, introductions. I mix them up sometimes because I, I forget. <laughs> I get confused. Let's be honest. <laughs> so this week's topic is self-exploration. At today's Meeting of the Minds, we are discussing self-discovery. So before we get started, Dave, announcements. Yes, I have one uh, announcement. Uh, we will have the landing page for the Rise Up and Shift event uh, available this week. Uh, but the event right page is up. The event right page is going to have uh, the agenda, the cost, the dates, the durations, who's speaking, all the cool experience stuff that we'll have a part of the speaking uh, event that we're doing is there. So you can go to eventbrite.com and look up Rise Up and Shift event, or you can click the links right below. We also, at the end of the week, have a Facebook page where we'll do periodic posting. So we'll have updates and things like that. So if you guys are interested, click the link below or go to eventbrite.com, Rise Up and Shift, and we will be having all of that information going up. I know a lot of you guys are going to the page. We already have people who are purchasing their tickets. So we are excited to see you guys come September. All right. Sounds good, man. I'm excited for the event. Uh, you and Peggy, Coach Peggy, have been doing a good job. Um, I'm excited. It's going to be a good one because we're going to really um, make it very different. For anybody who's been to our past events, this will be uh, many levels above those. Yeah, you know, for from, sure. From, the, from, from what I'm hearing. So, as I said, this week our topic is self-exploration. In today's Meeting of the Minds, we're going to discuss self-discovery. So self-exploration is going within and discovering who we are and who we are not. And this process is exploring who you really are. And through this exploration, you will discover many things. You will discover what you really want. You'll discover why you do things you do. And you may just discover your true power. In tomorrow's Connection Thursday, I will be talking on the evolution of the soul and how will connects to intention. For today, let us focus on self-discovery. So most people live in a reality through an identity set for them through society. Now, this reality finds them trapped in the intense emotions of fear, helplessness, feeling vulnerable, feeling disappointed, or just feeling sad. Now, how many people feel trapped in today's world? Think about that, Dave. What, what are your thoughts? How many feel people do you know just feel trapped? Yeah, I think the the vast majority, some way, somehow, uh, all feel like that. And for the most people, I think they, they can't even identify why they feel like that. And if you look at it, they, they may be trapped in situations, relationships. They may be trapped in feelings that just lock in a lower level reality. And this reality is what drives us to seek retribution. We blame our partner, our boss, our friends, the government. We blame the pandemic, high gas prices, all in the quest to justify our behavior. Too much stress. There's no way I can eat well. My partner drives me to drink. I can't do this. I can't do that. Life is just too hard. I hear this all the time. And the big thing they say to me is, well, I'm not you, Bill. That's what I hear. Your thoughts. Yeah, I hear it all the time. Uh, even even on my side, like listening to them speak about you. Uh, they speak as if you're you're some type of robot. And I, I have even said this many times in, in shows in the past that I used to think the kind of the exact same thing. I was like, man, this guy is a robot. He's militant. And I didn't know the stuff that you're teaching now was how you got there. It's not necessarily militant or anything like that. It's you're creating your own environment, your own programs, identities, everything. And that's it. It's important because as people begin or are advancing on their self-exploration, this is a truth. You can't be a victim and a success in the same time. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, yeah. right? And that time is your now. 
It cannot be after you take a nap or next week or you must uh, you you must pick a side or a victim or this or success or that. No, no, no. You've got to make a decision. You can't just pick sides. I'm going to stand on this side or that side. You are either a victim or a success. There is no middle ground to it. Either you're going to stay in the valley or you're going to climb the mountain. There is no middle way. You guys have to understand that. Self-exploration begins by awakening to self-discovery. So you believe you know who you are until you realize everything you once believed was set for you and not by you. Mm -hmm. You defend and attack those who don't agree or believe what you believe. But as you begin to slow down and step within, you begin to see the beliefs that are driving your behaviors. You believe when stressed out, you must light up a cigarette or eat chocolate or have a drink or lash out at someone. And soon you discover that this behavior was actually programmed through our family, our culture, even our ancestors. Our programming for our ancestors affect us today. Now, these negative behaviors are driven through resentment, in frustration, anger, and with us justifying that, we must stand up against those who don't believe what we believe. Or those negative behaviors when we do things out of guilt or the need to be part of something or to be liked. During self-discovery, all of this comes to light. And I want to be honest with everybody listening. It can be disturbing. Yeah. Your thoughts, David? Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, a lot of people... When they're going through this kind of self-discovery process, they expect things to just be easy, almost in a sense, like things will disappear and all that stuff. But I think for me, in the beginning of the self-discovery process was uh, disturbing in a sense, knowing that a lot of the stuff that I was doing, uh, most of the stuff that I was doing wasn't even me. Yeah, it's the truth, right? It's really it, kind of waking now. We talk about karma, right? We all pay our karma. You know what karma is? A conflict that wasn't brought to resolution. Because if you have a conflict that was not brought to resolution, that means you did not deal with the conflict. I guarantee you, or you did something that created a conflict, that conflict during your self-discovery must come up. Mm -hmm. That's karma. You have to deal with it. That's what sets you free. That's really what karma is. So when you start to understand that, you try to go through the day not making more conflicts. You want to have conflict resolution because you know you're going to have to deal with it sooner or later anyway. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the skills that I, I've realized that just not letting things go undone um, has really allowed me to do it because for me, it became an overthinking aspect from it. And that's where overwhelm and all that stuff started coming up is when I had stuff that was unresolved. And even though I wasn't deal dealing with it in that moment, I was because it was always in the back of my mind or I was worried someone else was going to do something to me or I was going to do something to someone else that I didn't fully resolve. And that's why I realized that identifying problems is great. But until you have a resolution to that problem, then it just starts to stack on. It carries. You, you don't drop it, right? It never expresses itself. You never really truly experience it. Yet I would say the biggest aspect of self-exploration, self-discovery that really gets into people um, and stops people or knocks people down is fear. And this is what puts a stop to the process. Yet when faced, fear is what propels your journey into self-exploration. Fear creates the resistance to beginning or continuing a self-exploration journey. Fear puts us in a state of anxiety, driving our behavior into bad programmed habits. Fear causes us to hesitate, put off until later. We procrastinate and fail to move out of the valley to the mountain. And as this takes place day by day, it slips by. Life begins to slip by and soon life is over. That is the truth. You see, fear is what propels you because you have to face it. Now, fear also breaks our momentum. We'll put off or stop doing what is needed to shift our identity, thus shift our reality. 
And fear keeps us wanting, declaring what we will do someday, you know, and we always, the statement is someday is the day that never comes. Mm -hmm. And understanding what we teach in stress mastery is an essential part of embarking on this journey of self-discovery. Because why, why is it important what we teach? Because we're teaching you the function and operation of being a human being. What we teach, it's the same for every single human being on the planet. So tomorrow I will address even more on fear and the shadow and, uh, you know, the journey of the soul. We'll talk about that tomorrow. I'll get a little deeper. But for now, I'd like to go and talk a little bit about understanding stress mastery. What are your thoughts before I jump into that? No, I think this is going to be an important one that most people overlook because most people, like we said many times already this week, is that they search outside themselves. And this is that that realization, that hard look at yourself in the mirror to really find the things that you want to fix, essentially. Sure. And so what we teach as stress mastery is actually essential as you're as you embark on a journey of self-discovery. Number one, you must understand the programming process of the human being. So stages of development set your fixed beliefs and this sets your identity, which builds the reality you live in today. Number two, you must understand the human construct and why your behavior is driven by what is happening to you. This is all taking place in your mind. And three, you must understand the energies, the habitual states versus activated states. You must get a clear picture of where you are at. And this is where you got to be honest with your self-discovery so you can create a shift. Don't try to be something you're not. Be honest because that honesty exposes the ego. So at the shift event in September, we will dive deep into these aspects because you must understand you. And these are the first steps in self-exploration. So self-discovery is fundamental component of personal growth. And it begins with self-reflection. Self-reflection allows us to examine our lives in all five life categories. Examining our behaviors, our habits, our actions that we would want to establish and those we desire to let go of. Self-reflection goes to a much deeper level when you split the eyes and you slow down examining the cage mind of the eye of identification and the eye of the heart and, and looking at the creation mind and the eye of presence of the heart. So if we look at the examining the cage mind, the eye of identification, this is where you hold your fixed beliefs. And the question uh, is, are these beliefs serving you? Your habits and programs, are these hurting or serving you? Your ego, the voice in your head, that inner critic, is the voice in charge or are you in charge? Can you distinguish the difference? As you examine each life category, this is how you discover. This is self-discovery. As you examine each life category, tie in your emotions. It's always about emotions and feelings. This is what stems from the programming and the beliefs that are set in the cage mind. So let's go through these categories. And I'm, this one, I kind of recommend you have kind of pencil <laughs> and pad because I'm going to ask a lot of questions. And this is an episode that is a more active episode that you might want to work on. So career, does your work bring you joy? Are you excited about your job or your career? If not, What's the feelings that are coming up? And look closely at the emotions and see where they fall within the energies. Are they, does your career or your work fall in low red zone? If it does, you would be bored. If it falls in mid red zone, you would be stuck, stressed out. If it falls in high red zone, you'll be driven, frustrated. If it falls in low green zone, you'll be satisfied. If it falls in mid-green zone, you would be open. If it goes in a high-green zone, you would be in process. Mm -hmm. So can you just stay with career for a second? What are your thoughts on examining the work that you're doing? And, you know, kind of, you have, to, why do we feel emotions? And I might as well touch that before I, I turn this over to you, is we get in life what we feel. Our feelings are the expressions of the programs. 
The body supports the mind. The body is what drives the behavior. The emotions are what keeps the mind stuck, right? The program activates in the head. It's felt in the body. That's the emotions. Always know the emotions are revealing what is going on inside you. So you want to get the feelings because we build our life through what we feel. Your thoughts on career, David? Yeah, I think the the one thing that I've I've noticed as far as millennials and kind of people my age is that they got one thing right and then one thing wrong. When they start to not enjoy a job and do things like that, they leave very quick. And that's why people, especially when you know I was younger, early twenties, how did you have six jobs? I just didn't like where I was working. And people used to say that was a bad thing. And now I would say it's a bad thing if you left because you don't know why. I think that's the issue. It's because it's you're just leaving because you felt something, but you didn't want to go into what it is that you felt that want, made you want to leave. Because I'm sure that carried over in many other categories, but that's why that track record of all those jobs just continue to pile on and you have a blanket statement of, it just wasn't working out. And then you say, why? I and don't know. That... That doesn't work. Right. You've got to know why you leave something, right? It doesn't fit you or is it a conflict you can't resolve? Mm -hmm. Because did you try to resolve it? What are the emotions you're feeling, yeah. right? Because if you're in anxiety, you're in fear, then you're running away. Yeah. You have to look at the, the, the energies are very important. So let's look at the finance category. What is your money situation? When you ask that question, how do you feel about that? Do you have debt? How do you feel about that? Do you have savings? How do you feel? Investments? How do you feel? What are the feelings you get around money? When you buy things, what does it feel like? When you're paying bills, what does it feel like? If you're having a conversation and talking about money, what is the feelings you get? Does it make you not want to talk about it or your avoidance? That's fear. Is it like you just feel like you're stuck and there's no hope? Well, that's low. That's the low red zone. Or if you feel like you don't have enough and you want more, then you're in a high red zone. Mm -hmm. You see, you can really use these energies to see where you're at because each life category has its programming. What are your thoughts on finance? Yeah, I think that's a, one that millennials are, are missing out in the sense of they don't know exactly why they want the money. I think a lot of people, especially when you start to get older, you start to realize what money can do for you as far as freedom but also other people. And I, I don't think millennials have had that experience to know um, what it is because they just want to make things easy. You know, money makes things easy. I'm gonna, money makes um, things easy. We have a, uh, and it doesn't. No. <laughs> um, so we have the finance life category coming up in the next couple of weeks as a, um, as a topic. And I'm working on getting um, an interview with Anna, uh, Ramos of Amita Wealth, and she works with millennials on wealth building and how to do that. So I'm working, and I am going to aim it towards the millennials. So I'm going to aim it towards the, the millennial generation the interview. It's for everybody, but she really specializes in helping them, and she has groups and everything else. So I'm going to try to get her on because obviously uh, money is important. We can't say it's not important, but money can't be your driving force because if it is, you'll end up empty. And you will end up losing it. Mm -hmm. So I want people to really do things right. But that's, again, what are your feelings around it? This Remember, we're talking about self-discovery. This is self-reflection. And this is taking notes and putting it down. It's not right or wrong. It's revealing. This is you really stepping outside the comfort zone. And then we look at the health category. How is your health? What's your weight like? Are you overweight? Are you tired? What's your diet like? Do you exercise? When was your last physical exam? Do you suffer from sadness, depression? What are you addicted to? I love when people tell me they don't have any addictions. We had one of our coaches say, well, I don't have any addictions. And I thought, <laughs> wow, it's impossible. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got something. It's a program that drives behavior that you don't have control over, you know, so what are your addictions? It's not always drug, drink, or food. It might be addiction to being liked. It might be an addiction to doing something, and this is going to affect your health. Do you understand your stress responder? 
What stress responder are you? And what we have a new um, coach in, in training, uh, Pablo, lives in Chile. Very, very good young man working with the coaches, right? And he he's understanding his stress responder. It has been like the most awakening thing for him. Mm -hmm. Everything that comes up from his genetics to his diet to how he has to train, everything changed. And this guy was somebody that looked on the outside like he was perfect. But when the blood work revealed he wasn't and he had the wrong stress responder, that's why. And then the question is, do you take supplements? Do you do drugs? Do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you do recreational drugs? How How is your sleep? Here's one. Do you drink water? Do you feel rested during the day? Can you focus? Do you procrastinate? Are you stressed out? Do you use any type of metrics to measure your health? These are the questions you have to ask. And how do you feel when you ask these questions? Do they make you nervous? Does it frustrate you? Do you feel like anxious when you do it? What is the feeling? Because it's going to show you the energy that it's in. It's not you that created that program. Self-reflection, self-discovery, self-exploration. Your thoughts on health, David? Yeah, I think um, right now, as far as where I'm at in age for millennials, I think this is where we start to realize, and I know at least, you know, in my friend group that um, we're not superhuman, you know, that we all function, and operate the same way and that we have to treat our bodies in order to continue doing the stuff that we want to do before burning the candle at both ends was a cool thing to do. I remember bragging to my friends, telling them stuff like that. I wasn't doing anything beneficial for my long term. And I think that's the thing that millennials take for granted, especially in the beginning. And then now when they're starting to see it, they're trying to do the same things that they used to do, but now are suffering from it. And this is, I, I think, I, I think this is the, the tipping point for millennials that are going to end up like their parents who are, you know, aching and, you know, bedridden or, you know, always complaining, hurting about something or, you know, or they can take advantage of their own life right now and really become fully optimal about what they're doing. But I think this is that tipping point. And I think it's the realization moment for them. That's, that's what we're talking about, right? You've got to realize it. So let's talk about relationships. Are you truly happy in your relationships? You got to be honest. You don't need to share this with anybody either. This is your self-reflection. Are you happy with your partner? How does it make you feel? Are you happy with your kids? Are you happy with your extended family, your coworkers, your business associates? You want to see how do you feel? How do they make you feel? Do they make you feel sad? Do they make you feel needy? Do they make you feel anxious? Do they make you feel frustrated? What is the feeling? Because we bring into our lives what we feel. That's the identity and the reality, they're not separated, but it's all held together through vibration. We build our reality through our vibration. That's what you feel. So that's what you want to do in this. You know, are you, uh, do you belong to any groups? Do these groups support your expansion? Do you enjoy sex? Do you have sex? Do you communicate? Not after sex, of course. <laughs> but do you communicate? Here's one. Who do you judge? Really be honest. Think about your social media. Think about everything. Who are you judging? Are your relationships expanding? Are they in expansion? Because nothing's about perfection. It's always about moving and momentum up the mountain. Do you stay with the same group or do you branch out? Do you look at, you know, do you always have to stay with the same people that you can't grow because of fear that you'll lose these people? Be honest with yourself. We want to know what you feel. So what are your thoughts on relationships? Yeah, I think that that is one that uh, it's it's getting um, harder for people to understand just because they're basing it off of other people because social media has allowed you to, quote unquote, see yep. into other people's relationship. And I think that creates a, a horrible expectation um, for your own relationship from there, especially, when, you know, talking about the self-exploration. You know, knowing what you want and not what you've seen is more important than that. And I think expressing that becomes the thing. Most of the time, people are expressing what they saw and what they think they want rather than digging deep and looking what it is that they want out of themselves in a relationship. And it's hard to do that if you don't know who you are first. Yes. 
self-reflection. This is what we're starting you guys with. We're really helping you at the event. We're going to dive into this stuff. Get ready. You're going to shift at the event. Because not only are we going to dive into it, but we're going to create experiences for you. So you leave that event already in a shifted state. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about personal and spiritual development. Do you read? Do you take courses? Do you study outside your current interests? In other words, are you open-minded? Do you explore? Do you set and close the day? Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you have time for contemplation? Do you use visualization? Do you use affirmations? Do you set goals? Do you work on these goals regularly? You know, you realize that we are now halfway through the year. This is the halfway point of the year, almost exactly a few days off. So how you do with your goals that you set back in January? Are you working on them? Do you look at them regularly? Here's a question. Do you invest in your growth? That means in your expansion, in your self-exploration. You have to invest money. But here's the big one. Do you invest time? Do you invest energy? So what are your thoughts on the personal spiritual development category? I think this is uh, one that I I think uh, as far as millennials, many people don't look into um, as hard as they should. Uh, I think they're buying courses, buying books and doing things like that, but don't understand the reason why. And it comes down to always self-reflection and understand the reasoning. But I think that um, this becomes the issue because you're doing what everyone else is trying to tell you to do instead of following what you want to do. I think the fact that personal development is personal for a reason and you trying to start at someone else's level or trying to start at someone else's experience because you don't want to seem like you're just new to it um, is what messes a lot of people up. And that's why I think the events could be exciting because it's a level for everyone and then you kind of shift yep. on your own. So I think that's the part is to just be honest with yourself and identify where you're at. It's going to be a good mixture of generations too. We've already had a lot of millennials sign up. Yeah. You know, millennials are the number one generation for personal development, at least spending and investing. Like I said, they'll, they will 100% you know? spend it. Will they know why? Probably not. That's what we want. We don't want you spending money and not walking away with cha without change. I and mean, that means that you don't change at the event. It's after the event. We even have that set up for you to help you after the event. Yeah. So well, let's discuss self-discovery and reflection from the eye of presence now in the creation mind. That was from the eye of identification, looking into the cage mind, into the programming. Now, the creation mind is the heart. Here lies the eye of presence. This is what's con the, this connection that opens up the world of possibilities. The creation mind is you, your spirit, your soul. It's your connection to all. Here is the connection to the superconscious mind. It's from here where you receive the spark, the idea, the calling, the, the nudge uh, to do something. You always wonder where that comes from. It's coming from the universe. And true self discovery begins with your purpose. If you're looking at the creation mind, where here is where your life and your dreams will begin to make sense. Self-exploration of your purpose is diving deep into the aim of your purpose to expand because each of the 10 archetypes of purpose has a unique aim. And that aim is to expand the purpose to serve humanity. You also need to explore your pendulum swing of your purpose. And what this does, it builds self-awareness, and it signals the disconnect. And do you realize the moment you notice, the simple noticing of this disconnect creates connection. That's why if you know, oh, when I swing, for me, it's going into frustration. The moment I'm frustrated, that's a good sign that I've been swinging out my pendulum swung. And this is awareness separating you, your consciousness from the ego. That's what the pendulum does. And this is when we understand that when you can see that, you create a still point. That's when you can see the ego chirping. You can see that inner critic yelling and you can feel. Remember, we bring in our lives what we feel and you're feeling it. That's that still point. That's a separation. And self-discovery into the creation mind reveals your core values. This explains a lot of the behaviors and conflicts you have in life. Self-discovery also reveals the secret in letting go of the ego's programs of the past, which are resentment and the regret programs. 
What is the secret? Forgiveness. That's held in the creation mind. The creation mind keeps you connected through gratitude and faith. And like I said, tomorrow I'll talk on the evolution of the soul. We'll talk about this. And all of this self-exploration will come together and make sense for you when we talk about the creation mind. So what are your thoughts on looking at the eye of presence and the creation mind? Yeah, I think the the act of gratitude and being gratitude is is such an underrated thing. Um in all in all single aspects that that it comes with, I shared a story in the community today about uh, meeting a gentleman on my walk, and it's crazy how things just line up. And I, I was complaining, I was I was upset that my headphones died, and and you know my phone was almost dead. And I had to just walk without it, and I walked into a, a gentleman, seventy years old, looked fantastic. Never knew he would have been seventy. His name was Jim, and he just said, "Hey, how are you doing?" And I was able to hear him because I didn't have my headphones. So I said, hey, I'm doing great. And we got into a really cool but brief talk. And I mentioned, you know, just thinking and going through this. And he's the one who mentioned self-exploration, you know, on these walks. And then he mentioned uh, just a brief quote was, uh, you don't find yourself. You become it over time with your experiences. And that, that hit because that that is what this is all about. So many people just try to find what it is and do all these things, but never make a change, never change their environments, never change relationships, jobs, careers, the whole nine yards and expect to find themselves in the same place that they were at. And for him to watch him have it down, his, his, you know, just the energy around that him. That was a great the, post. I commented, a, I commented yeah, deeply and, on that and, post because I thought that was one of the deeper posts that we've seen. And just, again, that's how generations help generations. Mm-hmm. It's being open and, and, and ready to listen, mm-hmm. willing to learn, and able to do. It's taking the older generation has a lot to teach the younger generation. The younger generation has a lot to teach the older generation. One of the things we want to do at this event is bring the generations together. Mm-hmm. You know, Generation X, the Z generation, the millennial generation, the boomer generation. Why can't we come together as humanity and stop the generational gaps and help each other? Because we're all human beings. And world is changing so fast that you can't say my way is the right way. How the hell can any person say that and really be it connected to themselves? They can't. It's impossible. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was a great story. And that the fact that you're open enough to hear it, whether you have your headphones on or not, that's not a coincidence, by the well, way. That's, well, that's when that's, God that's, says. That's exactly what I was saying. I, I, I said, you know, yeah. that was a moment where. It, it took my kind of small little upset about such a small thing and created a, a huge amount of gratitude, just putting that in my place so I can be there to be present. Because like I said, when I'm in the zone, I got the headphones on, I, I head down, I'm walking, you know, and that was something that, you know, was put in my place to listen. And that was one of those moments where, you know, like I said, I, w- I won't ever forget that quote and being able to share it with not just the people in the community, but now his small message to me is now hitting thousands yes. of people. So right that's now, exactly it's so. It's, it's, yes. it's bigger than you think. It's bigger than you could ever yep. imagine. So we'll close this episode. You know, tomorrow I'm going to get a little bit deeper with it. But most important self discovery is the relationship with you. This has to be the most important relationship in your life. And if you step into stress mastery and take on the self-exploration journey, you will discover, one, you'll discover your purpose and who you are. Two, you'll learn to accept that you cannot change or control others. Three, you will learn that you can change anything that is within you. You can create the identity that brings a reality that you set. You have that power. And four, you will learn that you can be happy and fulfilled right now that the journey is the joy. And number five, you will learn living in chaos and drama is a choice that no one can make you feel anything. And six, finally, you will begin to experience true states of 500 love. This is freedom without attachment. 540 joy. This is fulfillment in the process. And 600 piece. This is the completeness of that connection of head, heart, and hand. So, David, that's what I got for this episode. Do you have anything else you would like to add? By the way, those in the community, 
please read that post. That was one of the best posts I've seen in probably ever. It might be ranked number one in a community. It was that good. Got to got to thank, thank got you, to thank Jim. Jim. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jim. You know, maybe give Jim the podcast. I think he would I'm love sure it. I'll see him back out there on my walks. <laughs> yes, yes, you will. I actually see, I'm getting notifications now that people are in the <laughs> community. So I don't know that the episode's not out there yet, but people are obviously seeing <laughs> it. it. So anything else you want to touch on? No, I think that's good. I'm excited for the rest of the week. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in a planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.